Good morning, dear friends. It is again a joy for me to be with you this morning for a few minutes for our morning meditation. It is nearly after three weeks, more than three weeks since we have met last. And uh, during this time, the Lord has given me some rest and uh, some, uh, I've been, been able to do some readings. And again, I am back and it is my joy to talk to you this morning from God's word. God has given us a new day, and this is the day the Lord has given. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And before we walk into our days, activities, and uh, facing challenges and making decisions, let us be quiet and be in the presence of God for a few minutes and hear the voice of the Lord through His Word. Today's meditation is actually taken from the book of Acts, chapter 27, verse 24. In this verse, uh, I, I read this verse because the Lord has given me a thought, a word of comfort and encouragement to everyone who will listen. That verse says, Do not be afraid, Paul, says the Lord. You must stand trial before Caesar, and God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you, and therefore be strong. You know, life has not been very comfortable so far for the year 2020. And not only not comfortable and uh, good for the people of India, but also the people all over the world. We are still not free from the pandemic called the Corona virus or COVID-19. It seems India is going through a second wave in many states and many parts of India. This frightening virus has already claimed thousands of lives, not only in India, but all over the world. And uh, a ruined family life caused family fights and ending in divorces, separation, mental disorders, stress, and economic crisis, and job loose losses for thousands of people, as well as small business people have lost their businesses. Children are the worst hit. Many have already lost one complete year in their education. And many lost opportunity of timely admission in colleges or wherever else they wanted to join. Most of this year's study has been in online. This has brought its own problem. Children have become victims of a certain physical and mental problems and disorders. Sitting before the uh, TV or uh, uh, laptop and looking down always, which is not easy. And it is harder for the teachers. For some teachers it is easy, but then there are other things they need to do other than teaching. And so, there are, these are all disturbing concerns. Several questions also have uh, uh, surfaced, like how long it's going to last? Will it ever end? Can we ever have a normal life again? Is it the end of this age? 
Why does it take long, too long before a vaccine can be perfected? And my friends, the worst thing is no one can give us any solid answers to these questions. And the only thing they say, we may have to live with it for a long time. And in the midst of such a scenario, do we have any hope for the future? Many are discouraged and depressed and fearful. I am speaking for such people this morning. Listen to me very carefully. Apostle Paul was in a similar situation once. In the book of Acts chapter 27, you read it. He was on his way to Rome in a ship. And the ship was faced a deadly storm. Most of the passengers of this ship were prisoners. And Paul was one of them. He was to appear before Caesar. And the problem began in chapter 27, verse 6 onward till the end of that chapter. The rest of the chapter is about the storm. Even Apostle Paul lost any hope of, of, of a survival. And in that despair and distress, one night, while lying down, probably on his bed, or on a, wherever he was. In verses 23 and 24, God appeared to him and he spoke to him. And he said, Paul, do not be afraid. And that is the first thing he said. Do not be afraid. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, you have a strong anchor to enable you to hang on and face sudden and unexpected storms of life. And my friends, let me warn you that the day is ahead of us. According to the prophecies given to us in God's word, including Jesus Christ predicted, what can be expected in, as we approach the end of this age? And if this particular virus is going to be the end of this age? No, I am not saying that. There are more things to happen. But it is not very far away, the end. And uh, listen to this. Why we should not be afraid? As long as God has a place and a purpose for your life on earth. And you seek God and following the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the Lord will protect you from death. Remember, as God's faithful children, we all have the right to pray. What shall we pray during this time? O oh Lord, I am yours. I serve you, Lord, and therefore be my protector. And in Acts chapter 23, Paul faced a similar situation, another occasion. He was in Jerusalem where he was falsely accused and arrested by the prompting of the Jews and the leaders of the Jewish religion. In verse 11, in the night, Paul is anxious and apprehensive about what will happen to him in Jerusalem at that time. It appears that he might be killed in Jerusalem. 
And he had a vision, he had a dream of carrying the gospel to Rome and then beyond Rome, further west, including Britain. He must have felt very depressed that his desire might never be fulfilled. That night, again, God appeared to him. At this critical time, God came near to him. And he, this God encouraged his apostle. And his heart was strengthened and filled with hope again. And God assures him here that he will witness for God's cause in Rome. And thus his dream was renewed. We have a God who will not forget us and reject us. Neither does he ignore us at any moment. We have a God who has not promised us all the time a problem-free life or a storm-free uh, life all the time. No. He said you will have tribulations in this world. You will have troubles. You will face storms. But what he did promise was in the midst of it all, I will be there for you and with you. That is the promise. He will be with us. As, as the scripture says, in all our, our afflictions, he was afflicted. He shares our burden. And when we carry our cross or a burden, he will have his hand picking up the other end of the cross. And uh, as God's people who know Jesus Christ and his promises, there is no reason for despair or depression. We need to remember what David would do in times like this. And I want you to listen to this very carefully because you need to practice what David practiced, as we all have to. And if you are afraid discouraged or depressed, turn to Psalm number 42 and read from verse 5 till the end. And when you read this passage, what is the one lesson that you can learn? It is this, my friend. Don't listen to your own voice first. Listen to the voice of your faith. When you acknowledge and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you start following, you did not physically see Jesus coming and entering into your heart and becoming the Lord of your life by sitting in your heart. You haven't seen it. But you saw it all and experienced it all by faith. And that is why I say, Listen to the voice of your faith. At that time, you listen to the voice of your faith. Yes, trust him. He is the truth and the life and the way. He will save you and he will give you his salvation and his assurance of forgiveness. And you believed it, you trusted and you acknowledge him and invited him to come in, into your heart. And after listening to the voice of faith, your faith, then speak to yourself as David spoke. And uh, what, 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 did he, what did he speak? Let us turn to that and let us read. Psalm number 42. Reading from verse 5. And this is good for us. And during this time, those of you who are discouraged, disappointed and depressed and uncertainties are clouding your mind. 
David here says, Why are you downcast, O my soul? He is speaking to his own soul. Why so dis disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise Him, my Savior and my God. My soul is downcast within me, therefore I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. And then at the end he says in verse 11, again, why are you downcast, O my soul? Why is so dis disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise Him, my Savior and my God. And that is what David did. He began to listen to the voice of faith and he encouraged himself and then he spoke to himself the words of faith. Speak to yourself as David did. Be, uh, uh, speak to yourself positive, encouraging words of faith and some of the promises that God has given. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Even your father and mother reject you and throw you out, yet I will accept you. Speak God's promises to yourself. Begin your, your, your day with verse 5 and end the day with verse 11. The same thing. And you will be strengthened because you know your God is a living God who cares for his people. Put your faith and trust in God. Praise him for he is your savior and your God. You may also read Psalm number 16 verses 1 and 2. There it says, keep me safe, O God. For in you I take my refuge. I said to the Lord, apart from you, I have no good thing. And my friends, we have the best thing to lean on. Who? The Lord himself. Hallelujah. And therefore may I encourage all of you who are asking questions and who are sort of going into depression or troubled, you may have lost your job or some of you may be receiving only 50% of your salary and many of you have lost your job completely or you may have been a business, you may have had a business but you lost that business too. There is financial strain and you are stressed, stressed out and if you are like that, read the psalm. Number 42 and then verse chapter, uh, uh, Psalm number 16 verses 1 and 2. And then you speak to yourself. Your God has not forgotten you. You may have to cancel so many things this year. Like marriages. So many marriage cancellation. And so many marriage postponement. And so many job interviews have been lost. And so many, you cancel that and cancel this, you planning a trip somewhere and everything has to be cancelled and now it is difficult because of financial strain. If you are going through any of these things, let me encourage you, you are not alone. The Lord says, I am with you. And when you walk through darkness, I am there with you. When you walk through waters, it will not overwhelm you because I am there. When you go through fire, it will not consume you because I will be there. Remember, your God has not cancelled his mercies, his peace, his joy, his provision. He is still Jehovah Jireh. He will provide. May the Lord bless you as you meditate on this. 
and encourage yourself and strengthen yourself and come on, rise up and go forward. The Lord is with you. Amen. This is a great day and have a wonderful day. Amen.